for being here. I want to welcome everyone to the Firehouse Art Center. My name is Elaine Waterman and I am the executive director here. The Firehouse is a nonprofit art center in the heart of downtown Longmont on 4th and Kaufman, providing life enhancing art experiences through exhibitions, education, and community events. Our artist talks are casual chats with artists, <coughs> curators, members of the creative community and creative entrepreneurs with a focus on how to build community within the arts. Firehouse Artist Talks give the community a chance to ask questions and to get to a deeper level with the art on our walls. We are taping this talk and you can find it on our YouTube channel along with our past artist talks and presentations. Any works that we discuss will be, um, the photographs will be shown after the talk so that uh, even the people that are watching this on YouTube will know what we're talking about. So I wanted to start with a couple of updates from the Firehouse Art Center. We are having live drawing tonight, uh, Sunday, and then Monday as well. There is an Eco Elegance talk with Stacy on Wednesday of this week uh, with Fashion Revolution about uh, upcycling your wardrobe. We have our watercolor classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the ukulele group will be meeting this Thursday. Uh, and we also have winter walkabout on Saturday, um, and we will be presenting three musicians here for that. So visit our calendar on the website for more information. I just wanted to give a shout out to our sponsors, the Lamont Downtown Development Authority, Lamont Creative District, Scientific and Cultural Facilities District, the Longmont Community Foundation, the Community Foundation of Boulder, Boulder County Arts Alliance, and to Colorado Creative Industries. We couldn't connect our community to creative and life-changing art experiences without your help. If you'd like to donate to support our programming and exhibits, please visit our website or donate at the front desk. And lastly, in the spirit of healing, the Firehouse acknowledges and honors the Arapaho tribe the original people of the land upon which the firehouse sits. We also wish to acknowledge all other indigenous tribes and nations who call Colorado home. It is because of their hardships and sacrifices that we are able to be here sharing this art with you today. The firehouse believes that we can only grow when we have a better appreciation for the history, legacy, and contributions that the tribes have made, not just to this region, but to the nation. I am so excited to be here today with the Firehouse Art Center's Artist Member of the Year, Anna Balzan. Before we start, I just wanted to give a little background on the Artist <coughs> Member of the Year selection. Every February, the Firehouse presents either a jury Artist Member Show or an Artist Member of the Year Show. The Artist Member of the Year is selected based on the body of work that the artist has created during their time as a member with many aspects taken into consideration. <coughs> from skill mastery and progress, to development of new ideas, to connecting with the community in a unique, unique way through art. We also take into account being an active member in the firehouse community. Ana Balsan was born and raised in Venezuela in a very creative home. For the past 20 years, she has been creating art as an acrylic painter and a figurative sculptor. Her art focuses on capturing the natural beauty of the state through landscape, wildlife, and birds, and she blends traditional techniques with experimental abstract painting using alternative tools. Her hand-built clay slab sculptures express interpersonal experiences and emotions with a focus on the human body and its ability to convey feelings and situations. So thank you so much for being with us here. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, in your bio, it states that you were born in Venezuela. Can you tell us about your journey to the States and your early years as an artist here? Yeah, my uh, journey um, to the States uh, started after I finished a graphic design degree in Venezuela. Graphic design was pretty much new uh, at that time. It was a long time ago. So in 1990, I moved here. Actually, I moved to Miami, Florida, where I started uh, the English Institute of, uh, for International University. I, it took me a year and a half to learn the language, <laughs> be able to write it kind of well. I'm not the best writer. Um, so then from there, I moved to Miami, the community college, and the new rural school of the arts, where I, my focus was mostly 
in graphic design. I did work as a graphic designer for 22 so years. I had my own company and then I merged with another friend. And eventually I moved here about 20 years ago to Colorado. Cool. Um, my journey here was to find a place where I can actually relax and be able to start a family, uh, which I was not gonna have much fun <laughs> doing that in Florida since I had had my first miscarriage there. Um, that's when my first sculpture, one of my first sculptures came to life, um, and that's that one back there. It's called uh, Dreaming of Spring. Um, and uh, yeah, that just, that, that was just, I feel of emotions trying to uh, figure out how to deal with something like this. Mm -hmm. So um, you're talking about how your, your journey and specifically your, your miscarriage has informed your art practice. Do you think that, um, you know, as you're maturing as an artist, do you feel like your subject matter is also deepening, like your the things that you're trying to address, do you find them to be deeper now than when you were younger? Um, <clears throat> I, I think I'm just able to bring them up to life. I'm mm -hmm. able to talk about them, even though I still cry <laughs> <laughs> about them. And just, you know, just that one, uh, if words could kill in that particular piece. Um, I don't think as a youngster, I would have been able to bring it to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as to mature, you know, you want to talk about it. You, it. I know most people have come from even worse things, but to me that one was very traumatic. Mm -hmm. Mostly coming from people that you love and yeah. you expect better things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, your exhibit title, this show, is called Faces and Figures, Woman, Mother, Caregiver, and Artist. Um, how do you feel? I mean, I guess we could just talk about the pieces and your journey, uh, you know, as as a woman, a mother, caregiver, and artist, and kind of see how you translate that into your pieces. Yeah. Well, as I said, the first one, as a woman, my journey as becoming a mother, that was uh, traumatic in the beginning, very happy now. <laughs> I have two wonderful boys. Um, also, as a woman, you know, that was my mother, the woman, motherhood. Uh, as a woman, just, you know, the deeper relationships that you go through and good and bad and, you know, the disappointments in some of them. And also my journey into feeling a little bit more grounded as you become older. Um, and that one is with that divine femininity where I feel like I, you know, have grounded myself into that journey. Um, this one as well, which is called Freedom. Uh, that was, even though it was after my divorce, it doesn't have to do much about my divorce, but more about my journey as a single mom, going and, you know, trying hard to do the things that I wanted to do in life. And, um, I, I, if, you know, eventually, if you can come over, you can see I have big feet on there, I'm grounded, and I'm ready to go ahead and, you know, take my kids to the next level and give them a home, which eventually I did purchase. And, you know, I did good things, even though I had places where I had to stop and go back and keep going forward. <laughs> I actually, my goals were fulfill and I still have many other goals I'm ready to cash and you know get them. <laughs> and um, as far as faces and figures, uh, when we did your artist like studio walkthrough, mm -hmm. um, we walked through and we uh, you know you, you told me stories about each of the sculptural pieces and um, we walked into another room and then there was this painting. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
Uh, as you walk around this exhibit, you'll see obviously the works are mostly sculptural, um, with these two uh, being the only two-dimensional pieces. And I know that in your bio you mentioned that you started first as a painter, but then moved into more figurative sculpture. Um, can you talk about this piece and then we'll talk about kind of like that, that process, the change of medium? Yeah, this piece, um, I started this piece two years ago and I think I presented them upstairs in Studio 64 and there were uh, 16 portraits, 10 by 10, placed all of them within a square. And when I brought them home, they were all over the place, which they didn't make sense to me. So I cut them up and I sewed them into this canvas <laughs> and joined them with the red ribbon. Um, this piece to me, um, I think it was the frustration of two years ago, how people were just mean to each other. They were just not facing the fact that we are equal. And uh, so I wanted to show all ages as well in this piece because it was important not only to see us only as one age in particular, I wanted to see that, you know, elderly are also mistreated, younger are also mistreated. And it doesn't matter the background, but you know, I just, in, in general, I just wanted to show that we are all connected by blood. Mm -hmm. We have all met in the past and the present and the com coming, you know, past, future. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, to me, it's a strong piece that I wanted to show and I wanted to share with everyone, and I'm glad it's here. <laughs> yeah, so these were all individual paintings that you cut up and put yes. together. <laughs> and then the piece that is right behind you mm -hmm. is a self-portrait. Um, it is a self-portrait, and it's another one, you know, as a woman, uh, how we face different situations, and I was mad with myself. <laughs> <laughs> that particular day, I was disappointed with myself because I had made decisions that it just were not the best for me. And when I looked at the mirror and I saw how great the lighting was hitting my face, <laughs> I, just, I just started taking the selfies and I was like, I know it's crazy, but I just, I, I think my artist, artistic self just switched back and I was like, oh. <laughs> That's like a good painting. <laughs> so that's how that one came out. But I call it some uh, portrait a very difficult thing. Just to remind me that also, you know, you, I have to make better decisions for myself. And then, um, so these are two-dimensional in their paintings, um, but then you depart from that medium and you move into sculpture. Was there a reason that you yeah, the biggest reason were my hands. <laughs> Carpal tunnel and a few trigger fingers had not allowed me to paint as much. So that's a medium I will not let go because with painting, it's more my love for nature. And my a little, uh, and with portraits, it's just my intricacy love for human faces. I think they all tell a story and they're all just beautiful. So. That I would not let go. I just needed some time to recover my hands. And um, so these are made out of primarily, like what, what do you make your sculptures primarily out? Well, all my sculptures are made out of clay. And I start with, um, there's a few made with uh, coils, which this one's, all the white ones were made with coils. And then, um, Last year, or the year before, sorry, years are going way fast. <laughs> it was 2022. I was going through the internet and I popped into this woman, Christina Kuruba, and I just loved, loved her uh, sculptures. And I just had to kind of, I started looking more into her process and she works at his labs. And then she builds the uh, sculpture as she slow, so slowly, you know, just pushes and adds and 
fills it up. And it was just so incredible that it just, I just needed to have a big block of clay and then just to get from there. I just, this was a different, easier and difficult, actually not easier. <laughs> it's actually kind of difficult, but nicer process to bring my pieces out to life. Uh -huh. And um, I did go for a workshop last year with her, and it was incredible. I learned so much, and I know from there on out I can just swing it and <laughs> go out there and keep producing. Uh -huh. And I already have my next, uh, my future uh, sculptures are coming up, and uh, I'm ready to start producing soon. Very cool. As soon as my hands recover, I'll be out there. <laughs> that, and so you said that you had surgery in your left hand and then you're going to have another one in your right. Mm -hmm. When you have a surgery and after you heal, do you feel like it, it's going to be half and half? Then with the sculpture and the paintings, you're going to return to painting more? Or? I'm going to focus a little bit more in sculpting okay. um, just because I'm going to give a few classes. Which I'm very excited to, you know, pass my knowledge to others and give them as much as I can. I mean, there's so many things I didn't learn when I went into an art studio and that I would have loved to know. I mean, from pieces that exploded, and I was very embarrassed about that, <laughs> to, uh, you know, how to treat my pieces. Like, most of the white ones are white because I didn't know really what to use. And, mm -hmm how to work with glaze, which I still don't know how to work with glaze, and um, this year I'm, I'm going to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know if the people watching or listening, you know, that you guys <laughs> know that um, when you do ceramics, there's like a bisque fire and then a mm -hmm. glaze fire. So when you're talking about glazing, um, so if you don't glaze these, how do you get the color on these sculptures? But right now I'm using a process called milk paint, which is a, it's a, a paint that comes with, a, a, it's a powder paint that you mix with a bond and then slowly you, I layer it. So I, I, most of the time I start with a blue layer, I paint my entire piece blue or green, depends on the feeling that I want for it. And then I slowly add other colors to enhance the piece and to, you know, portray what I wanted, like with uh, the divine femininity, I wanted her legs to uh, kind of join the earth and the piece of, you know, the flower. So I I added more green to that uh, piece, just to join those, to make it seem that I'm, you know, I was joining the earth and I was joining the flower and I was, I'm kind of getting up there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of, my thoughts are just all over the place. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then English is not your first language, right? No, so. it's not. So I kind of get, <laughs> I apologize. I just wanted to bring that piece a little bit more by adding the green into it. That's what I wanted to <laughs> And I do notice that some of these sculptures have other elements in them other than, you know, just the clay. Yes. How do you make that decision and, and what what other materials have you used? Well, that's a dry clay. Um, the reason I use dry clay is because I had so many materials that I wanted to add in. So it has plastic and it has metals and some other things. Is that <laughs> that I found? That's those, the mask on the wall. Yeah, right? and those pieces I was kind of... I was thinking about nature and how we manipulate the space that a tree may have and then how they grow into whatever as a human we put in front of them. So they kind of adjust to our masses. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show that in those, that piece. And then the futuristic one, I was just playing with plastics and you know, trying to make it seem like something else rather than plastic, but I was trying also to recycle at the same time. So that was a fun one to make. I love that one. It's so different from a lot of your other, 
like masks that you've made. So we have three masks that are over here on this wall as well. And um, yeah, that one, a lot of them are just, you know, very beautiful to look at. And then the one with the recycled items is... <laughs> I think I also <laughs> wanted to show people that, you know, you don't just have to stuck, be stuck with that mask that just looks beautiful or is just the face of a woman or a man or, you know, whoever you want to portray. Also, that if you want to recycle material, you can just go for it. Go <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Very cool. Tell the world what you want to tell. <laughs> and um, so you have a, a workshop that's coming up here at the firehouse, which is um, another mask making workshop, mm -hmm. uh, where you will be like going through. The we will be studying studio. the face. So here is a sample of what we will be doing. It's just studying where the eyes go, the nose, the lips. And then it's by pushing and pulling that uh, we get to the desired faces. Cool. Yeah. And that is the slab. So you start out with a slab. We that. start with a slab that has been shaped into a half egg, kind of. And then from there, we work into something that looks like this or like that. <laughs> cool. And I know you mentioned um, how you kind of are learning as you go along. So the piece that you said exploded um, mm -hmm. in the kiln. And I know that you know ceramics is a pretty fragile medium to use. Um, <clears throat> How do you how do you deal with that when you're doing your sculptures? I have deal with a few cracks and it has been because of my hands not holding well the keys and it fell. <laughs> <laughs> that happens with uh, the one um, it works good kill. I dropped that piece and I was so upset. <laughs> um, but then I thought about it. It's like okay, I can do it again. If I did it once, I can do it again. But thinking a little bit more, I thought, well, you know, probably the clack on that piece is not that bad. It's about actually being broken. And I saw, I fixed it and I used epoxy and epoxy clay. And I was able to fix it. The same happened with uh, my inner child. Um, I have gone, I, almost, I was almost done with a piece when I went to the workshop in North Carolina. And when I came back, I completely forgot how deep I had gone in the neck. And when I kept, you know, fixing it, I made it too thin. And so the head kind of broke. <laughs> that was a challenge. But again, with epoxy and epoxy clay, I was able to fix it. And it seems like it had never happened. I know. I, it looks seamless. And you saw I it. Never, yeah. <laughs> it, went yeah it, it went into the kiln. <laughs> it was headless. <laughs> <laughs> so and it looks it looks like it's just one piece now yeah um there's way to fix <laughs> yeah which is a, a really great kind of tool and and tips to share with people because yes. um so are you the kind of artist that has many projects going at once or do you like to you know do one thing and then focus on that and then move on to the next no my head is constantly coming up with uh, new pieces and new thoughts and new classes and <laughs> it's an unending story yeah do you find that um working in ceramics kind of helps you do that because there is always that like you know whether it's the drying time or the firing time do you find like it's that it, that kind of dictates the fact that you have to move away from one project to another a little bit, but uh, here in Colorado, clay dries so fast. So I can keep wetting it and wetting it, but you know how far I want to go. So with the pieces, I, it takes me about two weeks to finish them. And that's because I have to move a little fast. Um, I try to keep them moist, but then they're drying from the inside out. And it's just by the time, you know, just they're dry inside and I still have to open the hole so they can breathe and they don't explode. <laughs> <laughs> so it's challenging to keep it for too long. So I think two weeks 
it's what it takes me to do the standing pieces and the complete piece. I don't know what will happen if I go bigger than that. Yeah, I, I was actually just going to ask about that. So obviously the size of your sculptures is kind of limited by the size of the kiln, right? It is. You can always do it apart, just cut, cut them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought I was going to do with the bailarina, but at the end I made, she was small enough that she fit in the kiln. <laughs> so that was perfect. But I was ready to cut her arms off and then <laughs> attach them. I didn't, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and back to talking about, um, you know, you, you had mentioned earlier the journey that you had as a woman and then a mother. Yes. Um, and, and then a caregiver. The caregiver. Yeah. So can you talk about that and kind of the emotions that you process through your art for that? Yeah. So as a caregiver, I, you know, I was going through the rivers of making decisions in my life, I end up uh, working. I stopped working as a graphic designer altogether. I got tired of people, <laughs> my clients. Um, and I decided to go into a more, um, a more interesting and caring job. And I, I, I saw an ad from Dignity Care. I called them up and I started working. I've been working for them for 10 years and it's a job that I has given me a lot of perspective in life. Um, it has been fantastic to meet all these people. I care for them. <laughs> no, I can talk. talk. <laughs> I care for them. Um, I'm with them from the beginning all the way to the end and it's incredible how each of them have a way of seeing life and death, and uh, it has been incredible. I would say that was one of my best decisions I made. Do you feel like um, being a mom kind of prepared you or moved you in that direction? No, I think that I've always been a uh, person that likes to be to care for people, and I think that's why I made my worst decisions. <laughs> um, so I, I think that I moved into that also to recognize the care for someone that actually needs it, not for someone that is just mean. <laughs> so it was a good move, and I enjoyed my job very much. I mean, I, you can talk to any of my clients and they love me. <laughs> <laughs> they love me. And uh, there are two pieces that I did, which is Ascent. Ascent. That one uh, came from one lady in particular, and she was very interesting. Um, and she told me one time, you know, I just, I feel like I'm so young. That my body just doesn't want to work with me. <laughs> and she was just so genuine and talking to me. It was like, you know, I know that because as I get older, I can feel like hey, there's some things I can't do anymore. And um, as the ascent, as actually the piece that I created at Christina Cordova, and when she gave us the three images to select from, I already knew what I was going to do with that piece. It already had a purpose and that was the purpose to make to show people that you know even though our spirit is young our little shell is you know just there it, it's young at one time and then it goes old and then we move on but you know we move on with such a that spirit that we have always had as such child as you know as a Younger, that like, you just want to run and do things and experiment things. So that piece to me meant quite a lot. And then um, the other one, which I'm slipping out already, the name is the last one, Claire. Um, that one was to honor my aunt. She died of cancer. I also came when I was walking with one of my clients. He ha uh, has multiple sclerosis, and his body slowly is you know, not working anymore. 
And he just told me one time, he was just, I just feel like my body from the inside is just not working as I would like to. It's just dying. And that's when that piece came out. It's just the dying of the, our insides out and that we need to care for ourselves and be more mindful that as we care for our material things, our bodies are also. And then the piece with the dragonfly. The piece with the dragonfly, that's uh, my sanctuary. So that's the place where I go every year, twice a year. <laughs> I used to go more. <laughs> and that's where I, I just unwind and try to care for myself. So it's, it's a very special place. You just answered my question. So, my question was, um, it, it goes back to the title of the, of the exhibit, Woman, Mother, Caregiver, and Artist. There are so many jobs that we have to juggle as women. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, um, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about. What is your personal experience as someone that has a job that's out of the house, um, is also a mother, and is also someone who has to maintain the creative energy to keep? creating mm -hmm. um so is that that's my place in my home my definitely my backyard my chickens and <laughs> <laughs> that's uh fills me up with all the love that i need and my partner here that he has always been there for me in every step and, and we just turned five years together which is great. <laughs> <laughs> um he has been there for me all the way and always supports me in every crazy idea that comes out of my mind. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, as far as uh, like having mentors and artists that you work with, I know you mentioned who was the artist, the sculptor that you took the workshop with? Christina Cordova. Do you have any other, um, and you had to travel for that one? Yes. Right. Do you have any artists or mentors or people that you work with here in Longmont or any other organizations that you belong to? I belong to a few organizations and it's, they're all great. Um, Firehouse Art Center, the Longmont Artist Guild, uh, the uh, Left Hand um, Art Group. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I just uh, started with uh, Novo in Boulder, mm -hmm. which I have not been able to do much with them. I, I'm hoping that this year I can be a little bit more involved. The Creative Crawl, unfortunately, I was not able to do anything this year, but I would like to get a little bit more involved. Uh, so there's a, a couple places that I would get involved. I don't have a mentor as of right now, but I think everybody that I meet Every artist that I talk to is somehow a mentor. Cool. Uh, and just to say thank you, um, Anna is actually a member of our creative, there's lots of C's in this one, right? <laughs> creative <laughs> community committee. So yes. we, it used to be the artist membership, but we kind of felt like the artist membership was a little bit limiting because, um, you know, we have so many different kinds of artists. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, 2D, 3D, ceramics, um, music. Yeah, songwriters, yeah, music, um, sewing. So, yep, we have our fiber uh, sewing people, crochet, um, leader, poetry. <laughs> yeah, poetry, <laughs> writers. <laughs> so, we decided that artist membership was kind of like a limiting thing, so we call it now creative community. Um, and Anna is a member of our committee, so um, thank you so much for the work you do there. As far as um, like collaborations or future plans, um, is there anything that's coming up? Uh, what I did mention, I have a few classes coming up, and I'm very excited that I'm finally kind of adding days to it and hours, because I wasn't sure of my hands how I was going to fill out. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I have the uh, face, the mask. Coming up on February 4th, then I have a um, slip, uh, slap rolling class. There's two of them I have set up, and that's mostly for beginners, so whoever wants to learn a few more. Uh, um, sorry, I cannot hear. 
white out. Right? So, <laughs> techniques. <laughs> there we go. A few techniques. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm actually putting so much information down for that one. Um, I think it's in March, and I have two days set up. The beginning of March, one is in, on Sunday, and the other one is in um, on Wednesdays. And it's two days, two hours each of them. Um, I can't give you the days because I'm blank out again. It's on, it's on the website. It's on my website, on the website. I know where the website If anyone might be interested. So are they going to learn how to make sculptural stuff or functional? Right now, we're going to just do slab and techniques um, okay. in that class in particular. Um, the reason is because when you work in clay, you have to do a lot of little tiles and samples before you can do anything, before you want to paint it or even just even know how your clay is going to react to mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. item that you want to put on. So I think I just want to start slowly with that one and teach them, I, and also safety. I wanted to, that's something that I did not learn when I went to any <laughs> of the studios I went to. It's about safety and learn about the pocket system, which is how to recycle your clay and how to, what to do with after all the water with clay, mm -hmm. what to do with that. <laughs> so we're gonna touch a lot of bases in that one. I'm excited to be able to pass this knowledge that I have learned slowly and by myself. <laughs> um, and then other classes is just, I love decorating my garden, so I thought let me just throw a few things uh, like, you know, wind charm and uh, totem, which with those also is how to build these labs. And they all have a reason why I'm doing it because later on I'm gonna do a bust in clay. So if you know how to build a piece, you can build a bust and eventually do a face. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm gonna do a full figure, oh, a cool. sitting full figure class. So that will be in June, July. Awesome. I'm still thinking about the dates. And that will be in my home studio. Uh, and then, you know, just uh, between all that, I'm going to be working and I have two collaborative coming up. One is the poetry artist that's coming up in April. So I have one piece coming up that I'm very excited. Do you know who are you working with? Aspen. Aspen, okay. Which I'm, I, we already met. <laughs> He's such a great young man. So I'm very excited about our little uh, so I got, I got together uh, and possible project coming up. And it's, we're very excited about it. And then the other one coming up in March will be the Centennial State Ballet, which we're going to be doing an auction to. Uh, yes, so the Centennial State Ballet. I don't know much information ballet. about what it is for. Oh, we can tell. Um, so the Centennial State Ballet, it was uh, from Art Walk. So it was the. Uh, dancers that posed during Art Walk and the artists created um, paintings, drawings, mm -hmm. and on uh, a, a sculpture. Uh, and then as far as the fundraising, uh, part of it goes to Centennial State Ballet and then the other part to the artist um, and then to the firehouse as well. Yeah, and so that auction is happening um, at the beginning of, well, it's opening in March, ends in April. Um, and there's going to be a little mini performance that's going to happen here in the gallery too so it is going to be very fun um so i guess i want to open this up for questions i think i have gotten all of my questions done so does anyone else have questions out in the audience yes it's not two questions so the um the figures over here did you do all those slab built or those coil no, all of those are slab. They all are all slab. Yeah, okay. The only one that has a different material is the ascent, the lady in the back, mm -hmm. the woman in the back that was done with uh, a pasta clay. Okay. Okay. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. The piece was getting a little heavy and just to be hanged in the wall. Right. So I needed to make another make it in another material that would not make the entire piece yeah. heavy. Yeah. 
And the other thing, it's not a question, just more of a comment. Like, I think the way that um, so I do ceramics and I glaze all of my work. And sometimes the frustration, um, I'm sure there's other frustrations that come up with your style too, but like, you know, like I'm working on something, like I don't know, like if I'm gonna layer these two glazes, I don't know what they're gonna do until I have a chance to fire it and do a test. So like in the moment, you, you either have you either have to set it down, go test the glazes to see if you get that, or you just have to not do it and move on and do a different technique. So I think what you've done with color, like I just love it, like especially that piece, like the way you brought it up from the, um, the lily pad, is that like sitting on the lily pad? Yeah. They, um, you know, how that just kind of... See my femininity. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that like the way you use color is just so fabulous just to kind of get that and just bring it in slightly and then fade it into the rest of the body. So mm -hmm. I, I'm really, I've never done that, um, use that kind of paint on ceramics. I've always done glaze. So I'm really interested in that and just, I think it's, your color is really fabulous. Thank you. And this is a class I'm going to be given. Um, it's, yeah, it is frightening, and I think that's the reason I have not gotten into glazing. Yeah. Because it's, it, they come up so different, and sometimes it's not what you intend to do. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's so much of a science, because it could change depending on, you know, even the position in the kiln or anything like that. Yeah. So, even if you get it perfected. One time. You never know. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. The only thing is that this uh, this technique is only for non-functional yeah. pieces. Yeah. So you don't plan on eating? I have one more question. What is the clay, like what clay body are you using? Do you know like B-mix or like, do you know right. what, what kind? The type of clay yeah. I'm using? I see with this one, um, the Bailaina, I use the Laguna okay. uh, paper clay as well, the Asin. And that's the one I'm going to be using along with all my sculptures because okay. I really like the way it feels and it holds the shape. Okay. Nice. With the other one, is I have used uh, Rocky Mountain Dover clay, uh, most of those back there. And then I have used also the Laguna uh, Dover. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I've used some other ones, but I like the uh, Inner Child, I used a red there even though it doesn't look red and I do not like that yeah. part. They keep coming apart and it's not work for me. Mm -hmm. But I somehow I was able to make this sculpture work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as far as like technique or any reasons why, a lot of your sculptures are two pieces or three pieces. Is there any reason for that or just like was that to keep on smaller pieces so they can be fired or what was your no, they just, they just needed that. Like with the, if quartz could kill, I was looking for a rock and I couldn't find a nice rock. So I ended up making the rock out of clay. <laughs> it worked for me that way better than just finding a regular rock. I, I just, they just need that extra to make the sculpture work. Yeah, and I think it's really great because the one, the mother and child one, the baby, off <laughs> and, and then it's it's kind of like you could have two different two different sculptures yeah. also I was look I was looking at the weight I can't carry that much anymore oh, because of my hands so okay. I was trying to make it less heavy and I like to use different materials like with the, this one with the boat I just went all over my yard and got pieces of wood and put it up together and then got this tile which worked perfectly to make this nice smooth water. Did you paint this or I painted it? Okay, because I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you found it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was white, I painted it, but I like it because it had some texture to it. Yeah. 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 So thank you for coming uh, to the talk. And uh, this will be posted on YouTube and I will uh, share photos of all of the works that we, um, that we talked about. I did also want to say 
Uh, a lot of the pieces that you've created were fired here at the firehouse. Yes. Um, we do have a ceramics studio upstairs as well as a ceramics membership. So if you are interested in getting involved um, in creating uh, either sculptural works or functional works, um, definitely check out the website uh, and find information about the ceramics studio there. This exhibit, the faces and figures, uh, is in the front area of the main gallery and actually in the back area of the main gallery, we have our ceramics members showcase, uh, where we kind of asked all of the ceramics members to participate if they wanted to by sharing either their most unique work, their best work, or uh, a progression of um, skill building um, in the works that they submitted. So there is also that work in the back of the main gallery. And the show will be up until February 1st, so you only have a couple of days to come see it. Uh, so we hope that we will see you in the gallery soon to see the work. Um, but thank you again for coming. We're going to break down the chairs and then kind of if you wanted to walk around with Anna and ask her questions about specific pieces, feel free to do that.